Hello, this is Father Will Fry, and welcome to the ninth episode on Ignatian Spirituality. If you recall, in the eighth episode, we began finally studying the rules for the discernment of spirits with a discussion of the first rule. Now, in this episode, we'll cover the second rule of the rules for the discernment of spirits according to St. Ignatius of Loyola and his spiritual exercises. And the second rule, translated by Father Timothy Gallagher in his The Discernment of Spirits, reads, In persons who are going on intensely purifying their sins and rising from good to better in the service of God our Lord, the method is contrary to that in the first rule. For then it is proper to the evil spirit to bite, sadden, and place obstacles, disquieting with false reasons, so that the person may not go forward. And it is proper to the good spirit to give courage and strength, consolations, tears, inspirations, and quiet, easing and taking away all obstacles, so that the person may go forward in doing good. So in the second rule, we see the bad spirit and the good spirit working contrary to how they did in the first rule. In the first rule, the bad spirit, the devil, demons, fallen human nature, the negative influences of the world, encouraged those in mortal sin to remain in mortal sin or to continue committing mortal sins by leading them to imagine sensual delights and pleasures, encouraging their life of sin. Meanwhile, God, the angels, the saints, the positive influences of the world bit and stung the consciences of these people, encouraging them to no longer remain in mortal sin, to confess their sins, and to strive to commit mortal sin no more. Now in the second rule, the influence of the bad and, evil and good spirits is flipped. And so the bad spirits, the devil, demons, fallen human nature, the negative moral influences of the world, now, in souls who are striving to go from good to better in the service of God, no longer committing mortal sin, or at least committing mortal sin much less frequently, and instead only venial sins, the evil spirit now bites, saddens, and places obstacles in that person's way, trying to tell that person a life lived for God is too difficult or impossible, or is unpleasurable, or is not worthwhile. And so the evil spirit puts obstacles and, giving false, and gives false reasons to that soul as to why they ought to stop their striving toward holiness and toward a life in service to God. Meanwhile, the good spirit, God, the saints, the angels, and the positive influences of the world encourage, strengthen, console, inspire, and quiet that soul, easing, easing and taking away all obstacles from them to ensure that they continue on their path toward holiness, on their t path toward growth in the spiritual life, and on their path toward service to God and to neighbor. And so this really speaks of the nearness of both spirits, that the devil and God are always working on the soul. The devil ultimately trying to entice that person to no longer live for God, just as he, the devil, chose not to live for God, encouraging instead a life of vice and sin, ultimately trying to kill charity in the person's soul that that person be damned for all eternity, as the devil is. Meanwhile, God is always enticing the soul, encouraging, strengthening, attempting to bring that person toward greater sanctity of life, ultimately toward Him, toward God. And this speaks of the love of God for each and every soul. All the rules and regulations of the Church are simply put in place to allow one to live a life in charity, to live a life of holiness, to live a life 
of true love for God and neighbor, not the false love that the world proposes, but a love that takes one's will and that requires suffering, which we see exemplified perfectly on the cross of Jesus. Jesus willed to give up his spirit for love of us, to free us from sin, and to allow us entry into a life lived in God, even now, in order to then live with him forever in the life to come. And so these two rules, and especially the second that we've focused on in this episode, speak of the great nearness of God, that God is not far from any of us, that he is so close to us that he even moves the sediments of our heart, allowing us to understand the proper way to live the good life, the life of holiness, the life lived in service to God and to neighbor. And God will encourage this life, granting us strength, granting us consolation, encouraging us to live for him and others. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I look forward to sharing the third rule in the rule for the discernment of spirits according to St. Ignatius of Loyola. Thank you and God bless.